High Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled The End of the Road by Denver Morgan. Nineteen forty four, the Burma Campaign. The hard, bitter, and almost forgotten chapter of World War Two. Allied forces push through the damp, humid tropical jungles. Ambush, counter ambush. Violent death in every shadow. Death from tropical disease, lingering and sour. On the ninth of July, two men, pilot officer Michael Thompson of the Royal Air Force, and Sergeant Joseph Maloney, American Army Air Corps, met on an isolated airstrip somewhere a few miles from nowhere. You're the guy who flies that thing over there? Oh, that's right. What can I do for you? Well, I wonder if I could hitch a ride with you down to the airstrip and G sector. Well, why didn't you go with the rest a week ago? I got sick, malaria. So they left me behind. Your army doctors just let me out. You're welcome to come with me. But I'd better go across and see the colonel. You know what they like. Okay. Let's wander over. Oh, suppose I'd better put a shirt on. <laughs> Tell me, what's your rank? Sergeant Air Corps. I was in the crew that built the airstrip. They're starting another one further south now. Oh. Sorry, I, I didn't catch your name. Maloney. Joe Maloney. Oh, Mike Thompson. Are you an army pilot or RAF? RAF. Army Co-op Squadron. Mm. You know, artillery spotting, general reconnaissance. You an officer? <laughs> yes, but don't be to worry you. Okay. I'm only a pilot officer. Lowest of the low. Started out as an aircraftsman back in 1940. Joe, one thing. Mm -hmm. When we see the colonel, make sure you salute and call him sir. Ah, oh, that's fixed that. We leave yeah. in the morning. Where are you sleeping? Uh, when they kicked me out of the hospital, they told me, go find a place for yourself. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome to share my tent. It's the one over there next to the radio. Oh, fine. I'll go get my gear. Oh, you haven't got much, have you? No, just a kit back. Let's go for a beer. Oh, that's a great idea. Hey, you're sure your officer pals won't mind you drinking with an uncomp? <laughs> no. Things are pretty slack around here. Anyway, uh, Yank will be a novelty. There's few and far between out here. That's a good drop. How long will it take us to get down to G-Sector? Well, it's about 200 miles. Say, three hours flying. You don't need flying. Well, only as a passenger. Uh, that crate we're going in, what is it? <laughs> they call it the J-3. It's the military version of the Piper Cub. Ideal for this type of work. Very slow, cruises about 72 miles an hour. Mm. Endurance about four. What do you do in Civvy Street? I was serving my time as a motor mechanic in L.A., War came along, so I never finished. You? Oh, just a salesman. He used to sell roofing materials for a building firm. I hated the job. Yeah. When I was called up, I was almost pleased. You married? Mm-mm. You? Yes. Uh, have another beer, then we'll call today. Yeah, great. I've got a few things I must attend to. I'll see you in the morning, round right about eight. You happy in the back there? Yeah, sure thing. Right. Let's go. Feel okay? Yeah. Hey, it's a great day. Hey, are we likely to run into any Jap warplanes? <laughs> you must be joking. They're way to the north. There are a few companies of troops on the ground, and the army's cleaning them out slowly but surely. We're halfway there. Yeah, I'll be glad when I'm out of this thing. Sure is hot. Where'd you go after this? I don't know. Find out when I get there. Hey, hey, wh what's wrong? Not sure. I've switched tanks. Maybe an air block in the line. Wow, don't do that again. Well, what's happening? 
Uh, nothing I can do. There's no self-starter. I'll try putting her into a dive. It's not the recommended procedure, but she might pick up if the wings don't fall off. Oh, great. We're at 5,000 feet. If it hasn't fired at 1,000, we'll have to find a place to land. A place to land in this? I can't even see a bit of ground. It's nothing but mile-high trees. No joy. We're going to have to go down. There. Over to the right. See? There's a clearing. Uh, yes, I've got it. Can't you raise base on the radio? They'd never pick us up from here. The other thing is, if I do, the Japs could monitor us and pinpoint our position. Yeah, I see what you mean. Make sure your safety harness is fastened and put your jacket in front of your face. Now stay clear of all the controls. Yeah, what do I do after that? Pray. Think you can make it? Yeah, of course. Piece of cake. Now, don't get the wind up. I'm going to slip off the last 500 feet. Oh, you okay, Mike? You okay? Hey, Mike, are you hurt? I, I banged my head on the compass. I, I, I can't see. I'm going to be sick. Get, get me out of here. Joe, no, where are you? Hey, you thought you'd never wake up. Here, have some water. Hey, hey hold it, that's all we've got. How are you feeling? Oh, terrible. I can't see a thing. Are you sure? Yeah, hey, look, my, my hand's in front of your face. You don't see it? No. How, how bad that cut on my head? Well, it's pretty deep. I, I cleaned it up a bit. Oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. I hope so. I didn't see that hole until the last minute. Yeah. Nothing I could do. The plane damage? Oh, it, it looks okay to me. What do we do now? I don't know. We were dead on course. They'll probably send someone out to look for us. Yeah, sure. It won't be for a day or two. If the weather closes in, we've had it. Our active are the job patrols. Oh, hard to say. They're in the area. That's all I know. Mike, I, I think I'll take a look over the plane and maybe find out why it cut. Yeah. You could fly it out of here if it's fixed. Uh, maybe. From what I can remember, the clearing is a bit short for a takeoff. But it could be done. Well, you just try and take it easy. Hey, is there a toolkit anywhere? Yeah, th there's a couple of spanners in that hatch at the back. Behind your seat. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'll get on with it. Get your fuel from, but that right-hand tank has a quarter of an inch of sand in the bottom. The fuel lines were completely blocked. Hey, can you see anything? Nothing. Be before it gets dark, I'll ring up some kind of shelter. Hey, it looks like rain. You know as well as I do that when it rains out here, no aircraft will get off the ground. Yeah, don't tell me. Sleep last night? A little. My head's killing me. If only I could see. Hey, your eyes look okay. It's just that... It's just that what? Well, that crack in your head doesn't look so good. It's all sort of swelling up. I've got the flare pistol out, and I've cut up one of the parachutes into a cross and put it on the strip like you told me. Now, what comes next? We'll just have to wait played off the cuff. Well, I'm going to strip the carb and clean it out. Give me something to do. Oh, good idea. Sorry I can't help. Oh, the ship's looking great. Your eyes any better? No. What food have we got left? Well, it could last a week, I suppose, if I look after things. Got plenty of water from the rain, though, during the night. How come nobody's been looking for us? The weather's clear. Oh, it's hard to say. Anything could have happened. Could have been a counterattack. No aircraft to spare. 
Do you think you can walk? Yeah. Apart from being blind and having a splitting headache, I feel fine. As long as you agree, I figure we ought to give it well, another day, and if nothing comes over, we'd better try walking it. Have you got the map? Yeah, yeah, it's right here. There. Well, can you see that line I've drawn between base and G sector? Well, yeah. we, we were just over the halfway point when the engine gave out. Well, it doesn't look like there's much out there. Which way do we head? Go back to base. I hope we don't run into a Jap patrol. I've got another idea. Well, let's have it. We fly out of here. Fly out? You're crazy. You can't see a thing. No, but you can. Now, listen to me. Pace out the clearing. Tell me how many yards we've got. Then I'm going to give you the shortest flying course in aviation history. It's about 130 yards. Right. Now, take everything out of the plane we don't need. Leave your kit behind. Rip the radio out. Anything to lighten the load. Okay. I'll fly from the back seat. You can read off heights, compass, headings, and speeds. Look, couldn't I leave you here and go out by myself? I might bump into some of our own guys. I mean, you never know. I just don't like this idea. I don't like it either, but it can be done. Now, let's get back to what I was saying. The aircraft will become airborne at about 45 miles an hour near the 80-yard line. 45. When we're on this point, I lift her off. As a guide, put markers at 80 yards, both sides. What happens below 45? She stays on the deck. Don't worry. There's mm. plenty of room. We'll get off. Okay, go on. Now, a compass heading is no problem. I've marked the course out on the map. When we're airborne, I just turn her onto course, and we should be okay. I'll take off and fly it up there. I might go along with it. It's the other end. If you don't panic and give me exact instructions, it'll be all right. Now, let's go over to the plane, and I'll explain a few things to you. Well, that's everything you want out of it now, huh? Now, you want me in the front seat with the instrument panel? Yes. Can we go over again what you want me to do? I just want you to assist me with the engine checks. When I get her rolling, tell me when we've got 45 miles an hour on the clock. Right. I'll then lift her off. Just keep me straight. Now, give me a hand to get in. Yeah, right. Right. Five. Okay. Now, swing the prop when I give the word. Right. Contact. Get in. Okay. Switch off one back. One. What's the RPM drop? Uh, about 50. Try the other one. Uh, same. I'm going to pull the carb heat out. We should get a drop of about 100 RPM. Right. What's the oil pressure? About uh, 70 pounds. Temperature? 110. Well, only I know you think I'm a nut, but we might make it. Cut out the apologies and let's get on with it. Hey, give her straight. Left a bit. No, oh, that's too much. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's it. Tails up. She's building up. 40, 43, 44, 45. Lift her up. We've passed the markers. We're running out of ground. Hey, man, we did it. How about that? Yes. Are we still on course? Yeah. Oh, beautiful, Mike. Don't ever believe this back home. How are you feeling? I'm not so good. My head's splitting. Think you can handle it for a while? Yeah, yeah, sure. I've got my feet on the rudders, my right hand on the stick, and my sweaty left from the throttle. Just leave the throttle alone. Keep her level and don't lose any height. Doing, Skipper. You tell me. Everything looks just hunky dory. What's the time? Thirty after ten. Now we should be at G sector in about thirty-five minutes. What are you gonna do when the war's over? I'll finish my time, I guess. I'd like to open my own gas station. Good money in it. I like the idea of working for myself. I think I'll try and go to university. Here they're going to have special concessions for returned servicemen. I don't have those kind of brains. I work with my hands. How long do you reckon this war's gonna go on for? Oh, Japs are on the run, but I guess they'll fight every inch of the way. I'm hoping to be sent stateside in well, a few months' time. I'm due for a spot to leave myself. Probably be in India again. Interesting country. What I'd really like to do, though, is to go back to England. Have a pint in some quiet pub and see some of my old friends. Hey, what about your wife? <sighs> my wife? Doubt if she wants to see me again. How come? I got a letter from my mother a week ago. My wife's been seeing a lot of a Polish fighter pilot. Oh, Gene, uh, sorry to hear that. Oh, don't be. 
Wasn't any good. I'll be glad to be out of it. Hey, weather ain't looking so good. Rain clouds? Yeah, over to the west. They're closing in fast, though. Oh, don't let it worry you. Never really breaks till late afternoon. Hey, Mike. Yeah? There's a plane over to the left. What? Yeah, it looks like a, a fighter. Uh, it's coming our way. Is it one of ours? I don't know. If it isn't, we've had it. Well, what should I do? Nothing you can do. Just sit and wait. Hey, Mike, it's a British one. A Spitfire, I think. What's he doing? Why, he's turning and coming back. Hey, he, he's coming in alongside. He's... Yeah, he's tapping his headset as if he wants to talk to us on the radio. Try and signal him. Our radio is out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the picture. Mike, Mike, I think he's trying to tell us to go back. We can't go back. We can only go ahead. Fuel is getting low. Uh, maybe I was wrong. Anyway, he, he's giving us a wave and he's heading off. What do you think he wants it? Oh, who knows? Whatever it was, there's nothing we can do about it. You keeping us on course? Joe, you don't think I'm blind for good, do you? No, not a chance. I read about a guy just like you in a car smash. Something to do with temporary concussion. This guy's sight came back to him in about six months. Six months? Well, I don't know. Maybe it was six weeks, six days. I can't remember. Hey, you want to take over? No, I, I think this wound on my head is reopened. It's something running down my face. It must be blood. Yeah. Just hold it with your handkerchief. Yeah. Oh, probably stop. Mike. Huh? Oh. Mike, don't pass out on me, will you? If you do, we've both had it. I cut up one parachute and left the other behind, remember? I, I'll be all right. Maybe the altitude's affecting me. I'll take the stick. I'll tell me when you get down to about 1,500 feet. Okay. Level out now, Mike. Yeah, right. I'll take over. Yeah, I, I feel a bit better. Oh, great. Uh, we should be able to see G sector any time now. It's not much of a place. Yeah. There's just a line of tents down one side of the strip. Sort of thatched control tower in the middle on the left-hand side. A and a windsock. You know, tell the wind direction. Yeah, got it. Joe, listen to me carefully. We've got no radio, so there's nobody on the ground who's going to know we're in trouble. We'll stay at this height. I want you to line us up with the runway into the wind. You got that? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Now, don't worry about any other aircraft. They're few and far between, so there's no risk of collision. There's the field, Mike. Okay. Keep your hands and feet on the controls and follow me through. Right. Now, bring me across the field at a height of 1,500 feet. When I'm about the center of the field, I'll make a 90-degree turn left. Now... Pick yourself a landmark on the tip of left wing. I'll then turn the aircraft until it lines up with your landmark. You got it? Got it. We'll fly towards this point until we're about 500 yards away from runway. Then I make a 90 degree turn left downwind. Same procedure. With you. I should now be flying at 1,500 feet parallel to the runway. When I'm about 400 yards past the end of the runway, I'll make another turn, throttle back, and make a glide approach. Glide approach? Yes, don't worry. I'll have the carb heat on. There'll be no icing up. Now, Joe, listen. This is where you come in. Okay. It's important that as we turn onto the runway, I'm at a height of 500 feet. So read off the height as we're coming down the last leg. Okay, I've got it. All being well, we'll line up perfectly. Our approach speed will be 65. All you've got to do is to tell me whether I'm in line with this strip and keep on reading the height off to me. I want to be about 50 feet up as we cross over the threshold. I'll start rounding her off when you tell me we're about 20 feet from the ground. It should be plain sailing from then on in. We're running parallel to the runway now. Uh, pick up your left wing. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That's better. We're just passing the end of the runway. How many feet up? About 1,000 will do. Well, uh, that's about it now. You hear me, Mike? Joe, I, I, I'm feeling grim. I can't stop this thing bleeding. Stay with me, Mike. I can't handle it myself. Joe, listen carefully. If I pass out, this is what you've got to do. What? Remember, she stalled at 38. If you see the speed dropping off, just stick the nose down. When you get down to about 20 feet, let her sink. Pull the stick right back and cut the throttle. No matter what happens, we'll stay on the ground. Okay, okay, I got you. 
Are you going to throttle back? Yes, I... I I'm okay. How... How, how, how do we look? Well, start turning your now, and we should be in line with the runway. No, no, that's too much. Straighten her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, we're back in line now. What's our height? Uh, about 600 feet. Airspeed? 70. Cob heat on. Yeah, yeah. 400 yards. 300 yards from the end of the runway. What's the airspeed? It's dropping off. Get the nose down. Joe, follow me through. We're, we're too high. Go round again. God, go round again. I'm going to make a 360-degree turn. I lose height on the turn. Should bring us back to the end of the runway. Okay, you're the boss. Uh, uh, beautiful. Oh, Mike. Runway coming up. Oh, height? 200 feet? 150 feet? I think I'm going to build. Hang on, Mike. 100 feet? 75 feet? Airspeed 62? About... 30 feet now, Mike. Pick up your left wing. Mike, you're not straight. Straighten her out. 20 feet now, Mike. It's yours, Joe. Chop the throttle. Pull the stick back. We're down. Switch the fuel and mags off. I, I can't keep her straight, Mike. I can't keep her straight. I'm going to hit those trees at the end. It, Mike. Hey, let's get out of here before it goes up. Give me a hand with these straps, will you? Yeah, sure. Here, let me do it. Yeah, right, that's it. Now, uh, lean on me, Mike. Not much further now. There's some kind of trench over there. We better get into it. There's going to be bits of plane flying all over this place any second now. All right, take it easy. There she goes. That's the end of that airplane. The Yanks will probably give you about 20 medals for this. What's happening? Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hey, Mike. Yeah? Hold everything. There's something wrong. What? There's a bunch of guys running towards us. And I'll tell you this here and now. What? They ain't ours. They're Japs. Japs? Yeah. This place must have been taken on a counterattack. That's what that guy in the Spitfire was trying to tell us. Mike, this is the end of the road for us. I guess we kind of lost it up. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal.